Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, brethren. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we'll be having a session with our sister, Sister Kumbi Adeoti, who is the Chief People Experience Officer at Leadway Group. And she'll be sharing with us on a topic we have captured, discomforting your comfort. Brethren, I believe that we'll be blessed as we listen tonight. If you can invite one or two people to join and enjoy this, of course, we'll be recording and we'll share the recording tonight or tomorrow. Let's just say a word of prayer. Father Lord, we, we thank you. We celebrate you. We, we worship you. We thank you because you are our help for years to come. You are our hope for ages past. We celebrate you because without you, we are nothing. We are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by economic indices. We are not moved by political machinations. We are not moved by the things around us. We thank you because you are our anchor. You are our savior. You are our king. You are our God. Tonight, as we share your word together, we ask that you will open our eyes. You will enlighten us. You will equip us. You will correct us. You will rebook us. You will strengthen us. Your word says, as we appear before God in Zion, we move from strength to, to strength. Tonight, let there be liberation. Tonight, let there be solution. Tonight, let your peace speak to us. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over Amen. to you, sister. Thank you. Thank you, Yemi. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Let us begin once again to thank God. Let us ask for wisdom for tonight. Holy Spirit, we ask that your wisdom will be made known to us, that every man, every woman that will be here will be impacted. There'll be a thing or two that they will take away and that they would be able to make a difference where they are. Lord, use me as your oracle tonight. Touch my tongue. I lay every flesh, I lay every cow, every title, everything that I am for. I have received nothing except that which you have given. Daddy, I honor you because only you are the pillar of my life. And I lay it all before you. Lord, thank you. Enable tonight. Let someone get a vision. Let someone get a reorder. Let someone receive strength. Let there be healing for someone. Lord, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. How's your day been? I trust you're doing well. I trust you're fine. Can you all hear me? I would love to know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, please let me know that you can hear me. Yep. Okay, I can't see anyone in the chat. Okay, all right. Thank you, Joma. Thank you, Turayo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, awesome, thank you. All right. So, oh, Adedolakbo says, I can't be heard. Okay. Is it any better? Is it any better? All right. Let's 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 get into the meat of the of the word today. So tonight I will be reading from the book of Genesis. I'm going to first of all read from Genesis 39. Um, sorry, Genesis 40, rather. And from verse Genesis 40, I thought, of course, of course, by all of us should have our Bible. Otherwise, please be digitally fast enough to open so that you are able to follow. From Genesis 40, from verse um, 6. This was when Joseph was taken into the prison after Potiphar's wife had um, falsely accused him. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. He saw that they were dejected. 
So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. And that, I want you to hold on to that because he said, do not interpretations belong to God. Prior to now, we have known Joseph to probably just be a dreamer. At no point in time in the history of Joseph, since he came to four at age 17, did we know anything other than him being a dreamer. Then follow me quickly to Genesis 41 from verse 33. From verse 33, it says, and, and then of course, let me give you preamble to this. This was when um, um, Pharaoh now had a dream again, and then he was called to interpret. And this is the second time that you will see a situation where he was called into interpretation. So, and now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man. Please note this character, a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land. This was Joseph giving advice to Pharaoh. What was asked of Joseph was interpretation of dream. Joseph did not stop at interpretation of dream. Joseph went on to give advice. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners. This is an order of leadership that he put into place. Let appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain. And under the authority of Pharaoh, so from leadership, he moved into agriculture and he moved into, you will see a sense of procurement. You will see a sense of um, 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 chain of agricultural activity that has to happen if you have to even get into um, issue of storage. They should collect all this food and store up grain under authority of Pharaoh to be kept in cities for food. And then so we'll see that there has to be preservation technology in all of this. And then this food should be held in reserve. So then that goes into accounting, into um, 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 reserve management. You know, there's gonna be a whole lot of economics that has to go into this, you know, that will be upon it so that the country may not be ruined by farming. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom the spirit of God? So these are our anchor scriptures. And you begin to ask yourself, how did Joseph ever get to a point? How did he become prime minister? What was Joseph's journey? How did he come from under 24 hours, being a prisoner to somebody that is now ruling the entire country? And most often than not, we as Christians, we, everybody loves the, um, my God is awesome. My God is powerful. Um, um, he said he will bring me from the dung hill and set me amongst princes. And, you know, you hear all the promotion neither comes from anywhere else but from God. You hear all the beautiful things that we want to become. We claim the, pro we claim the promises of God, but we often forget the process that God has put in place that enables those promises to come into our life. And in very, very recent times, I am seeing a, an even more worrisome trend, especially amongst HR professionals that are Christians. You know, every profession seems to be changing at the speed of light. 
you will, it is still in HR that you find that people say, they are still comfortable to call you personnel. They are still comfortable to just call you um, um, higher and fire. If any profession has gone under a lot of scrutiny in the last six months, we are the ones that were being dragged on Twitter and on all the social media, on interview process, on the non challenge of a, a, an attitude of HR persons. Um, I read many things on WhatsApp and it would appear to me that HR people are in a comfort zone. It appears to me that the world around us is moving. We're quick to talk about um, the future of work or the future that has come upon us. Everybody has sung on chat GPT. If I were to ask now, how many people have used um, chat GPT or even try to even um, experiment with it? I I'm not sure we'll have so many here, you know? Um, it, it, I just see a certain trend. It, there was a case that I had to um, sort of mediate into about, about four weeks ago. It was also alarming. The attitude of the HR person, the person actually wrote and said, if you are not happy with it, go and tell MD. How did we get into such a comfort zone? Especially for believers. On this very platform, we've had many conversations. We've had, we've established the fact that our work is not just work. Your work is ministry. You have been called into the marketplace ministry. We went through what marketplace is and how you ought to operate in the marketplace as a Christian, as a believer, as someone that nameth the name of Christ. And as such tonight, we will be examining the life of Joseph. What, what did he do differently? How did he transcend? from where he is today, where he was, to how we got to know his story. Yes, my God would ensure that I am the head and not the tail. What is the process for being the head and not the tail? Does it entail you being in a comfort zone and just thinking that once you speak the word or you can live your life in a way that is totally lackadaisical, how do you deal with the times and the seasons and ensure that in the times and the season, you can be like men of Issachar who understood the times and the seasons. You can be like Bezalel who was skilled and who understood how to use the skill. You can be like Joseph if you don't know. Joseph had to practice HR. For the kind of work he was doing, remember, he was the one who talked about appointing commissioners. That is recruitment. The Bible talks about wise and discerning, which we just read. It meant that there was, there was, there was recruitment criteria. There was a crafting of a JD, the job fit for the people who could deliver that role. It also meant that they had to, it wasn't the commissioners that were going to do it alone. If they were going to have storage, they would need welders. So the, they would need the people who will build it. That means capacity was important. He needed to understand the people who had the different skills that will make it happen. They were going to write the JD, they were going to recruit, they were going to shortlist and eventually take the best of the people because you are not going to do the work of the king in a mediocre way. That is also another difference. You are not, you as a, as, as an HR person, how much mediocrity do you put into your work? Because I hear many things. I can't come and kill myself. Whoa. Once I collect my salary, I don't do, I don't earn that salary. Is that what you were called to do? Because we do not serve as unto man, we serve as unto God. So we'll get down into the journey of um, Joseph, by the way. And then we will take some few lessons around it. And we will look at how should we position, having given the background, having this understanding of what we have. So if you look at Joseph's background, this guy in Genesis 37 and verse two, 
we were told that he, the guy was um, would report his dad, would report his brothers rather to his dad. And he was, or there was something about him. Why was he reporting them? He was reporting them because he could not, he could not take what they were doing. He could not stand what they are doing. The, um, the Bible says this young man of 17 was tending to flocks, flocks. And in tending to flocks, um, was tending to flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bila and the sons of Zilpha, his father's wife. And he brought their father a bad report about them. You would see that from the beginning, Joseph chose to be a person of excellence, but he was at a price. He was at a price. You would also notice that his brothers, they hated him. They hated him. In verse, verse 4 to 8, especially verse 8, um, verse 4 actually says, when his brother saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and they could not speak a kind word to him. You can imagine growing up in a house where not one word that is kind is said to you. Some of us have grown up in such environment. It's not impossible. And do you know, maybe that is what you are transferring to what you do on a daily basis. I pray that the spirit of God will heal you, that you will recognize it, that if there are things from your background that you need to deal with, that you will deal with it. This was one guy who won't hear, hear a kind word. Who, somebody who was hated. By the time you get to verse eight, verse eight says, and his brothers hated him all the more, the intensity of hatred. You can imagine you're sleeping in a house, even your food or anything, anyhow you want to move. And I've experienced something similar. It's not the best of position to be in. I lived once upon a time with some family and the level of irritation was unbearable. So I would leave very early in the morning by 5.30, I'm out of the house. I won't come back until around 10. As I'm coming in, I've eaten from outside. I just enter my room and I sleep. I say, good evening, everybody. Because even from the door, you can feel the intensity of the hate. It was, it was incredible. And this was the kind of childhood that this guy had. Even at some point, his father, who loved him so much, yeah? We get to see the father saying to him, when he told his fathers, as well as his brothers, his father even rebooked him. And I can imagine how was that? Will you stop that nonsense? What is What, what are you spilling from your mouth? This dream, are you saying me and all of us will be bowing down to you? Even the father became irritated. Now, this was his comfort zone. This was his dad who could give him suffer, succor. Now, his own father also was against him. You know, even in all of this, when his father called him to say, come and go and give your brother's food, the guy readily got up. There's something about attitude. But it, you would see that this attitude came to play later on in his life. So key things we're learning, we're learning that one, even though he had a nasty background, even though the environment was not favorable to him, he chose excellence. Secondly, he was always, always ready to serve. At no point in time did we ever hear that Joseph had a response that was negative or a response that was reactive. You know, some of us, while in the office, before your staff will say one, you have responded with 10. You fly off at every undo. You get irritated so much, you know, and often you forget the purpose for which you are there. HR itself is a ministry, is a calling. You can't react at everything, but let us examine if you are on a process and you, you see yourself becoming a typology of a prime minister, of somebody great. There is always the process. You can't desire the promise without the process also. So you find that even in his old drama, his own brothers would mock him. 
if you get all the way to verse 23 of 37, you will find that he was stripped. Can you picture that whole scene in your mind when your own brothers now decide to make you go naked? Not only was he stripped, they threw him into a system. In the process of throwing him into a system, they were actually had a conversation. We want to kill him. We will kill him. We will do this. Can you imagine he could hear that much? Listening to that, just try to play that whole scene in your mind. That these guys, we have the same blood flowing in us. Yet they are planning to kill me. That's the intensity of the hatred. The only person who stood away, who wanted to do something, was Reuben. And guess what? Eventually he was sold. He was sold for how much? 20 pieces of silver. Human life. He wasn't sold once. This guy was sold twice because he was first of all given to the traders. Then the traders then sold him to the guys who are in the palace. So this is the background that Joseph had. Is it possible for somebody with this very background of hatred, of neglect, of reject, at the same time to succeed? Most of the things we see around us the dreads of our society often have a background like us. The cases we take to EAP in our office, if you dig well, there's some hatred, there's some misconfit in their, in their background. My question to you is, are you going to let your background determine how you can function and change the course of order where you are? Is your background speaking through to you? because you had a horrible childhood, because nowadays you will now say, anybody going through this now, you say, ah, no, I have a, um, oh, uh, uh, my mental health has been destabilized and therefore I can't focus. My, uh, you, you're affecting me the way you are talking to me. You can't even be kind to me. Those have didn't experience kindness. All those have knew was hatred, but he chose in his own way, to be excellent all through. So what does this mean? The highlights of this discomfort for Joseph was so straightforward. He never had psychological safety growing up. He shouldn't have grown up as a normal adult, yet he did. I ask you, what excuses do you hold to function effectively where you are? What exactly is holding you back? You know, he had emotional trauma. How do I know? When his own dad begins to tell him the person that loves him, and he, was, he wanted to still be able to please the dad. Maybe the man can change his mind. When the my father was going to send him on air, and he quickly collected it and wanted to run with it. Of course, the only skill we know that got him into trouble is to dream of, just to lala, as we will say it, you know how we will say that dreams can be very, very useless. But this, this, this gift is actually getting him into trouble. And he will begin to ask God in his mind that this gift, is this, is this all that is all about? And there are times even in your own space, you are asking yourself, each time you want to share a knowledge with your team and somebody reacts, ha, and then you start to feel, oh God, why did I bother? Why did I do this? You know, it's your, it's your gift. Gifts are meant to enhance. If you, it's not being used today, Bible says that a gift, a man's gift will bring him before kings. And we eventually see how this gift brought him to, to the place of kingship. So what, the, what we know him to do was just a dreamer. In fact, as a young boy, we didn't see any evidence that he used to um, do any household work. We didn't see, even though he would go to the field with them, because he was the father's favorite, the whole write-up actually showed that he wasn't allowed to do anything or learn anything. At some point, we would get to a, where we, our, the way we read in Genesis 41, 33, you will realize that he was taking care of grains. Was, were they farming? What he knew to do was flocks. 
But we will talk more as we go along the line. Don't forget that this was a guy that was labeled for death. Do you imagine in that, in that pit hole he was, he, he was? Even if he wanted to wee wee, if he wanted to be, he had to do everything inside that place till the traders came and he was taken out. We don't know how long that whole process was. But then it must have been disheartening. And each time somebody that has been labeled for death, he will keep acting as if what is there to live for. But we find out that this is not the attitude. You know, he moved from daddy's boy to being the reject of all. These are things that would shake anybody at all. So if you look at it, this was somebody who has been through rejection. There are times you go through the tough patches of life. Is that, do you leave that tough patches or you choose to turn around your story by what you have as your enabler? So of course, we've looked at the highlights of this, of this and the real question we should start asking to ourselves, why is this important? What is your dream in that organization that you are in? As an HR professional, where are you going? What is your intent? You know, Joseph's dream was never shaken. He was never shaken. He was unclear. Joseph knew the end, but he did not know what journey it was going to take him to that end. And that was why I said in the beginning that, hey, we always pray for promotion. We want to be the CHRO. We want to be the um, group something. You want to own your own business. Who knows? You want to run the, a, the best consulting company. You want to be the best. You want to be a household name. You want to be a, a brand that needs to know. Are you ready to go through the process? You know the end. You are speaking it forth because you every day you confess Romans 4. We call those things that be not as though they were. This day I am moving forward. I press forward like Isaac. I was great till I became very great. Did you know that Isaac was digging ground? That was work. So what exactly are you doing along that process? He never used his childhood as an excuse. So today I hear it's only comp and Ben I can do. I don't know what they do in l and I'm sorry, I, can't, I don't know maths. That's comp and Ben, I can't do it. I, I can't even do, ah, no, talent reviews, sitting down, talking to everybody, documenting, going through process. No, 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 no. I'll just be in l and once I have the curriculum and I can talk, me, I have moved. And then somebody is going on leave, we can't even call you to stand in for the person. What, what excuse are you given? I don't know how to do it. The world is shifting. You are told go and learn Power BI. You are told you need this to be able to enhance your growth. You have excuse for everything. Joseph's childhood was never an excuse to his progress. What are you using as an excuse? He had a value, he was diligent. His value for excellence was to the core. Today, I see many anyhowness in HR people. You ask for a report and what you will get will shock you. As long as we put the report, let's just send something, let's just send something, let's just send something. They are today, Wahala is too much. Is that diligence? Is that excellence? You are called to a life of excellence. Do you think excellence is leaving it in the church? Or when your husband is looking? When no one is looking, how excellent are you? We saw that the character of excellence was from childhood all the way to the palace. And I will prove it as we go along. You will see it. Excellence was part of him. You never see this guy complaining. <laughs> I have seen complaint too. I've seen people who did not greet me for days because I told them to do certain things or the organization demands certain things or then that's when they fall sick. 
are not available. They are sick. That's when they are really sick. They are not ready to do anything because they've been told to do. Do you know that what happened to the children of Israel, the ones who were meant to cross, the Bible says that they were destroyed of the destroyer because of their murmurings. Because of their murmurings. What have you been told to do that you continually murmur? That you have become chief complainer from morning till night. <sighs> the Holy Spirit will help us. If we go to Genesis 39, verse 6, it is interesting. Genesis 39, verse 6. We see, the Bible says that so Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. What made Potiphar to do that? Why would Potiphar be so confident that he would say, no, this guy, don't worry, I won't look back, just go and do. It is simple. It is excellence. Excellence begets trust. He says, with Joseph in charge, he did not, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Can your boss have this level of confidence in you? How have you gained traction in what you do? That you are so excellent that what you do does not require being checked. Can you run the team when nobody is looking? Or you are constantly saying, because A did this, I will do this. One more, come off home. We have found the core of work. They keep dumping it. It's okay. Do unto God, not unto man. We learned he, he did, he learned administrative skills because if he wasn't excellent at administration, Potiphar could not have given it to him. I want to ask you, he was brought as a slave. What were they doing in his father's house? Flock was what he was tending. Where did he learn administration? How did Joseph learn this? Have you ever asked yourself? It simply means he was flexible and he could pivot. You know, we always say in HR, URL, or learn, relearn, and learn again. Are you doing the same thing you are preaching? When last did you learn anything under that, that which you have always known? He learned administration. We will see how the skill of administration also got him to where he got to. The same certificate you have been parading in the last 10 years, you have not even bothered to recertify. Your colleagues have been speaking to you, your boss has spoken to you. Will you go and do this? You are not even bothering. Oh, I'm in nature. After all, I'm in charge. Who will have asked me? Do consider. You'll be fine. You'll be all right. Last, last. Yet you are asking God to bless what you are doing. What tool will he use to bless? Was it not the stick that Moses was holding in his hand that God used around him? So what are you holding in your hand? An expired certificate. What skill have you learned? How are you renewing yourself? We see Joseph renewing himself here. He needed to understand palace protocol to get to a big place. He understood order and ensure the same process. That was what he did in the palace. There was order in everything. Bible says he attended to his duties. How have you put order where you are? What processes that ensures that the organization runs effectively? How are you making a demand of your own capacity? Here is a guy who created order. He needed to understand palace protocol. Do you know why? Because he was almost still going to go to prison. He needed to learn the law. He needed to learn the high. Some of you, the cleaner in your office, if they greet you, it's too, your mouth is even too heavy to greet them. Life is a ladder. You must remember the people that you meet on your way up. So 
the process he learned was going to also be useful. The last protocol. Remember, he was coming from. Uh, he, he, he was a shepherd boy and he was going to go to the palace. He needed to learn. He quickly learned administrative skill. He knew one day he was going to be in charge of people. How do you root people if you don't even have administrative skill? He understood authority. He never abused it. He knew boundaries. The boundaries he knew, his values were God raised. And how, how do I know? <laughs> if you go again to the same Genesis 39, when we get to verse, um, the same verse, latter part of verse 16 to 7, it says, now Joseph was well built and handsome. What you will call in this time, well, I don't know, I'm not a Gen Z or Generation Alpha. For those of you who are, you can put it in the chat room. But in our own days, it was called TDH, tall, dark, and handsome. That's what the Bible calls about this guy. He was a hunk, good looking, all the way, you know? It also means that his dress chains has changed. He wasn't dressing as coat of many colors that his brother stripped him off. They stripped him off of a past and they were preparing him for a future without realizing it. And the guy is a hunk. And verse 7 says, after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. And in that whole says, you get to verse 8, it says, but he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in this house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted in my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. He understood his position. He understood authority. My master withheld nothing from me except you. The guy knew boundaries. Because you are his wife. The next thing he says is, how then can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? How can I do such a wicked thing? What does that tell you? Value. His value was a guardrail. First, he recognized God. Second, the value of excellence. Excellence will not permit him to do that. He had boundaries. Some of us, see finish has entered our matter. We have no boundaries. We can talk. We can act anyhow. You just, you show up anyhow. And you are HR. What are your values? How do you show the value of the organization? I know certain HR persons, when we put values, the one for my organization is I score. We have integrity. Even looking at them, you can question the integrity. You have service. They are never there to serve anybody. Respect, they can talk to anybody, anyhow. Excellence, ah. If they send a report, you will correct it 10 times. And you don't think there's an issue with it. It is okay for the unbeliever in your team, but for you as a believer, is that the standard of your father in heaven? And we need to begin to check these things. Bible says we are light, a city set on a hill. Which light are you giving your organization? Let's Kukuma shake this table and break it. What are you known for? Do you shine the light? And by reason of interaction with you, do people want to, or you are just fine girl, maybe girl doing nothing. And we see how he was excellent in his relationship. And because he was excellent, trust was an easy thing. He was never lax. He was in charge. But because he was in charge, he didn't become so comfortable in himself. He wasn't so comfortable. He knew he couldn't be. Because the excellence of yesterday is not sufficient for today. Excellence of yesterday is obsolete. You need to take it to a higher level. Are you still living in the past of the things that you have done that were excellent and you do not realize that there is a new order for the day? The workplace is evolving. Your, the world around you is evolving. 
It is you, the practitioner that is living in the past. At no point in time did you see him entertain bitterness. I am in teams. I have seen many teams. The degree of bitterness is, 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 makes one to shiver. Is this what you are called to do? To show how you can keep malice and roll somebody in your tummy. Yet you are asking God for promotion. This is Joseph. He lived amongst the people who hated him. We will eventually see later on in, in chapter 42. Did he eschew bitterness to his brother? These people wanted to kill him. The people in your office have not killed you. It's only abuse. They have abused you. You have caught fire and brimstone. Eventually we see him. When he got to the position and how he got there is interesting. He moved out of his comfort zone completely. Why did I say so? If you remember Genesis 39, 6, where he spoke to the people, to, he said, what is wrong? Why are you people sad? And they told him, he's in. was he an interpreter before? If he could interpret his own dreams when he was at his father's house, would he have, have continued the way he was? Wouldn't he have told God and said, God, you know what? If, if this is what the journey will look like, you know, it's better I just stay with this sheep. I can't go and be doing this suffering. He moved out of his comfort zone. What have you been told to do? What do you need to learn to unfold the future that you need to get? It, it costs nothing. There were experiences I had in the past that I never thought I would use again. Today, I have to do customer experience. When I did it then, I never thought I was coming back to it. It costs you nothing. I learned insurance. I went to learn Power BI. I sit down and I looked at sales matrices. I tear up the p &L to understand it. If you are going to rise from where you are, you can't stay in your comfort zone. You need to discomfort your comfort. Joseph did the same. He wasn't going to be just comfortable with being a dreamer. He needed more than the skills of dreaming to become a prime minister. What do you need to do? How would you position yourself? What should you do differently? We can't live life the way I see it regularly. There's a higher order over our lives than we are living as at today. The first part of it is he recognized God. Even when Potiphar's wife was talking to him, the first thing he said, how can I do this unto God? Each time you're in your office, are you thinking, how can I do this unto God? Is this acceptable to God? Is this God's will? What would God have me do? What would God have me do? So your first priority is, where is all of this in God? Because you're not the regular practitioner. You are there when you read the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. The next line is thy kingdom come. You are an enforcer of the kingdom where you are. Are you enforcing kingdom? You've got to make God first in the first place. Second, you need to understand your identity as a favor carrier. You need to understand your identity as a favor carrier. There are many verses on who you are as a favor. Later, you can go and read Psalm 5, verse 12. You, it is said you have a covenant of favor. I bet Joseph knew this. And you know what? How do you know you're a favor carrier? Favor is not a one-time thing. It wasn't one time with Joseph. The first time in, in Potiphar's palace, the guy had favor. He went to prison. He had favor. When he was called out of prison, he had favor. Come on. You have a covenant of favor. How are you using it? Are you working with God in the right way that enacts that favor to make it come alive? Secondly, in situations and circumstances, Genesis 41 from, from 33 to 36, 
provide unique solution. Stop giving us the solution that you used 30 years ago and say it is relevant for today because you have not done something about your capacity building. You can only give to the extent of what you know. We see Joseph changing mode. He moved from being a dreamer to an interpreter. From being an interpreter, we suddenly see that he learned agriculture because he now talked about grains. When he was growing, it was only sheep that he knew. We knew he had to set up because people were coming to buy. There were contracts. How did I know? Because at some point, people had to exchange even livestock. They didn't have money, cash. So that means he had to learn some bit of law. He knew he had to learn cross-border law to be able to take care of all the other countries. He learned procurement. He learned HR that was not, uh, how does being a shepherd boy have anything to do with HR? If you are going to be providing unique solution, continuous learning must be something. You must be hungry for knowledge. You must seek knowledge. You don't wait for information to come to you. What is new? How is it going to change my space? And how do I reposition for this? You are there to make a difference. Understand this because you are a carrier of God's grace. You carry light. Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You already carry somebody who is great. How are you unleashing greatness where you are? Or you are unleashing mystery to the people? Are you a mystery carrier? Genesis, the, the, in Genesis 30 from 27, if you know the story of Laban and Jacob, Laban said to Jacob, he said, if I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. He was begging him to stay. Your bosses should be begging you to stay. He says, I have learned by divination that the Lord blessed me because of you. Are you being a blessing where you are? Or they are looking for the day that, let us just drop and go, we are tired. Are you making a difference? You need to recognize the people who have been positioned around you. Joseph recognized the cup bearer. Even if the cup bearer did not come through until two years after, he recognized it. He was still the same person God used. Come, listen to me. Joseph was not bitter with the guy. There are people you've told about your cases. You've said, I want this. I want to move to this organization. I need this for my brother. Help me to do this. I want a loan. And you have become bitter on top of the matter because they did not do. Well done. Is that what you are called to do? You've got to serve with joy. You've simply got to serve with joy. The Bible says we walk unto the Lord, not unto man. You think you positioned yourself. Did Joseph position himself? God orchestrated the journey. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process on your way to your elevation. Ah, you've got to be able to show up right. If you, and, and, and I, I, I would love to really read it. Genesis um, 41, verse 14. Bible says, as so Pharaoh sent for Joseph, he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. If you read earlier verse, it was with a sense of urgency. But how did he show up? Bible talks about he was shaved, clean shaved. Yeah, changed his clothes. He didn't show up in prison clothes. Some of us, we need to know everything that is wrong with you. When you are called to show up, how do you show up? He understood Kuala's principles and protocols. He was prepared to show up for the level he was ready to take. Are you showing up for the level you are ready to take? Or you are just saying it by mouth? And when things, when you are being called, you show up in a different way, tattered, ugly looking. And part of showing up is part of skilling up. You want to become something, what is your readiness for it? In organizations, we do competency framework. We HR people are the culprit. That competency framework, you do it for everybody. Have you sat down to look at it that if I'm going to step this, 
if I want to become this, these are the competencies that I need. Are you showing up with those competencies? Of course, be vision oriented. Bible talks about writing the vision, make it plain. How often do you tell people where you want to go so that when that opportunity comes, you are positioned for it? It was because Joseph opened his mouth to the butler. The butler could have remembered, ah, there was a young man. When he remembered, he actually even said, oh, how have I sinned against God? Yeah? And in fact, let me read it. Um, from verse 8, Genesis 41, in the morning, this was the king, Pharaoh, morning, his mind was troubled, so he sent for all magicians and told them his dreams, but no one could interpret for him. Then the chief cup bearer said to Pharaoh, today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with his servants and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us, then he went on to narrate and told, and for things turned out exactly as he interpreted verse 13, I was restored to my position. The other man was in hold. But when he was leaving, he told the cup bearer, I said, please put in a word for me. What is your vision? Have you documented it? Where is it written? Who knows where you want to go? How will your enabler enable you and provide platforms for you? when your vision is unknown. You must continually appraise what you are doing. Is this where I ought to be? What is missing? What is the gap between where I'm going and where I ought to be? Humility is essential. Bible says, let no man think highly of himself than he ought to. Because you are here today, we are like the grass. But while you are there, shine, give the light. Adverse circumstances will always come. Most of us collapse in the midst of adversity. We're not able to take it. Adversity builds your character. Don't sink. Be conscious of people around you. How do I know? If you look at Joseph, the Bible says that in, um, Joseph, in Genesis 39, Genesis 39, um, one second, 39 or 40. From 40, Genesis 40. When Joseph came to the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. How many people are you passing by every day in your room? Do you notice their emotions? Do you notice how they are? Do you ask after their well being? Or everything is centered around you, me, myself, and I? Do you even have a sense of care? If you can't care for the people around you, how can God entrust a whole nation to you? You have not provided a sense of care for the ones that are around you. You are not even sensitive. The one that is crying, the one that didn't come to work, the one that didn't, you, because you have a ministry of care as an HR professional. And if by adventure you are not even an HR professional, you are on this platform. There's a sense of care that we are committed to as children of God. He told the disciples, he says, see my sheep, feed them. Who are you feeding? Who are you enabling? Do you care enough or you just breeze through your day like trailer and you cannot even notice that somebody is willing. Be conscious of the people around you. Of course, there are labels that may have been given to you. Don't take labels. Reinforce who you have. Joseph consistently knew his source and he connected to the source. Manage your emotions. The emotions you don't manage will manage you. We never saw Joseph bitter. We never saw, there was nothing written to complain about emotions where Joseph is concerned. If we open a book for you, we will write from now till tomorrow. We will not finish writing on what it is. Waiting when things have not happened is part of character development. Joseph, in the prison, he learned a new skill. 
He learned a new character. He had to wait. He waited two years. At times, waiting is essential for your journey. Don't be in a hurry, lest you run into an accident. What are the things you need to learn while you are waiting? Know your limits. Always ask God, help me. We sing, oh Lord, our help in ages past. And thank God, Natas um, Nelbalisi just released one. I love the song, Ebenezer. Ebenezer, oh. My soul, so help. Who is your help? Ensure that you find that in God. Be flexible. Be ready to pivot. Learn a new skill. When the time is coming, so it's only when you are ready. What you have not prepared for, you cannot be placed into it. Joseph had the journey of preparation. He was not grand gra. He was not with. <laughs> he There was a journey. There was the process. What process can you get very uncomfortable with so that your process may be complete? Joseph was clearly, clearly discomforting what he was, was known as a dreamer, but refused to just be a dreamer. He went to the gift of interpretation. He went to the gift of administration. Fraud administration, we see him. What he needed to be a prime minister. He learned agriculture. He learned um, HR. He, he, was, he was dexterous. He was multidisciplinary. Who are you? What are you becoming? How do we associate you with the father and the place that you are being? What light are you giving? How much capacity are you building? The capacity you have built, is this sufficient to take you to the next place God wants to take you? May we receive wisdom that is required. Praise God. If we have any questions, I will take them so that we can quickly pray and get going. Questions, let me go into the chats. Questions. Questions. Do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? I can't see any question in the chat. So if we don't have questions, let us pray. Our Father, we're thankful. Let us begin to thank God for today. Let us exalt him. Let us give him praise. Yeah. Let us lift him high. Let us thank him for his word. Let us thank him for exposition. Let us understand that we have been called to make a difference and we cannot stay in a position of comfort and expecting things to happen. There's a part that we must play. Let us ask for help. Father, we ask for help. We ask for your help. Holy Spirit, we ask for your help. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your help. We ask for your help. Oh, Lord, we need help. Teach us. Speak to us. Lord, we ask for the spirit of excellence. The Bible says, is there anyone that is lacking in wisdom? Lord, grant us wisdom. Grant us knowledge. Grant us discernment. Bible talks of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were of excellent spirit. Lord, we ask for excellence, that excellent spirit. 
that we may begin to make a difference where we find ourselves, that which you have placed in our, our hands. Help us, oh God, to manage our emotions, understand the vision and the purpose and follow through. Help us when the seasons of life begin to happen, when we go through the adversity that we may build character, knowing that the character is required for where you are taking us. Lord, we ask for your help. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, we ask, oh God, that in our respective positions, wherever we may find ourselves, we ask that the light of your word comes through to us in Jesus' name. We ask that you enable us, oh God, to be men and women who will stand for you in the marketplace. We ask for wisdom to navigate the time and the seasons in the name of Jesus. We ask for strength as you take us through different processes in Jesus' name. Cause our eyes to be fixed on the vision in Jesus' name. Father, let us not lose sight of the people that you have placed along our path, that which you will have us to enable us to do. Lord, we honor you. As we go to bed, the Bible says that you give your beloved sleep. We ask for sweet sleep. Lord, the week that is unfolding, we ask in the name of Jesus that the lines will fall for us in pleasant places in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask for good measures. We ask that it will be pressed down, shaking together and running over. We ask that in the presence of our enemies, you prepare a table before us. Cause our cup to overflow, anoint our head with oil. Let our hand never be empty. We ask that goodness and mercy shall follow us every day of our lives and we shall dwell in your house. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 We receive help for God. We receive help from heaven. Amen. 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 I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, Yemi, are you there? Are you able to take over now? Oli, Amy, are you able to take over now? Amen, amen, amen. All right. Um, it's. I want to encourage every one of us. Go out there, be the light, make a difference. You are called for a purpose. Please go and shine that light. You're on your journey to the place of greatness. Enjoy the journey. Serve with joy. And use everything that God has deposited onto you to become the person of greatness that you are becoming. As is typical, um, Yemi will make this available on um, YouTube and everyone that wants to watch it again can go back and watch it. If you want to recommend to your friends, please do so. God bless you. Have a wonderful night rest. Have a powerful week ahead of you. God bless you all. God bless you. Okay, you all can go to bed now. <laughs>